Good morning, Lionhearts. It is about 4.30 a.m. I haven't slept yet, and I am back at Kevlavik Airport on my way out of Iceland on my way to Stockholm. And then, once I get to Stockholm, I actually have to hop on another flight and fly to Visby. Here we go. All right, well, adios, Iceland. It's been real. And speaking of being real, that was for sure real. Hope you guys enjoyed that in the vlog. Made it to Stockholm. At least I think. I don't know. Does that look like Stockholm to you guys? Sorry gang, lots of traveling today. I gotta catch another flight. Hopscotch anyone? Have no fear. If you wanted to see some of Stockholm, I have a day here, right at the end of my trip. Oh man, my suitcase is a freaking heavy man, very heavy. And of course I had one of those moves where you have to go all the way across the entire airport to get to my next one, so here we are. Okay, there it is, Visby. Next stop, Visby. So from what Michael said, this was gonna be a very small plane. And it certainly looks like it. That is a very small plane. Well, for sure, this was the only downside to my entire time in Reykjavik was that I bought this ultimate, ultimate hat of the ultimate warrior with the eye holes and everything. Thinking if the weather would be so cold, I would be able to wear it everywhere I went. And I didn't get to wear it at all. So since it's raining here and uh, Stockholm, maybe I'll get to wear it, who knows? Well, hello Lionhearts, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. I finally found my terminal, I finally got my stuff here, I'm ready. Next stop is like, not even an hour flight, we'll be on the island of Visby, seeing Michael and Christina. They're supposed to pick me up right there and unless the plan has changed, the plan is they're gonna pick me up and we are immediately gonna go through Denmark, go through Germany and do some exploring and picking up the alcohol for the wedding, so pretty excited. This is my first time in this part of Scandinavia, and uh, I intend to make this a great trip. Uh, John Juan will be here in a few days. A handful of my friends will be here, so it will be a lot of fun. And I just wanted to send a big shout out, thank you to the Turcot family who sent me this about, I don't know what, two weeks ago before my trip, and it has so many compartments and little nooks and crannies and stuff that this really, really helped keep my trip organized. At least through Reykjavik, I was able to find everything and plenty of compartments and space for everything. So thank you so much, guys. I appreciate that. You guys are such a great family. Well, the only meal that I had in Iceland all day yesterday was what you guys saw. And I didn't really even eat that much of it. Um, so I'm at the airport now and I'm trying out some Swedish burger place called Max. Waiting for my airplane to go. And really the only reason that I got a burger at Max was because it reminded me of Saved by the Bell. And I was like, oh, the Max. I gotta eat at a place called the Max. Oh, and Ja, if you're watching this. Hi, Ja. How are you, buddy? See you soon. Thanks. Stop Carlson land. All right, we have made it. All right, I feel like a president. No, actually, to throw it back to what I said about Naked Gun yesterday, I feel like when Frank's leaving the plane and everybody's cheering, and he's like, no, no, I just did what any man would do. Frank, they're not here for you. 
That's when Ed says, Weird Al Yankovic's on the plane. Welcome. I see my party smiling ahead. Let me get around these people. Aha! All of the streets are lined with these wildflowers and stuff. Like That is awesome. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a little bit different. Oh, I'm are looking ready, forward to it. Ready, no, you, dude, are you kidding? Different? We just got here and I'm already trying to talk these guys into pulling in this antique market <laughs> right here because I see a hearse with a big mascot bear head on it. Um, basically a coach without horses over here. I'm not going to spoil it now, guys, but we're going to spend a whole day there. At least. At least. Maybe multiple days. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we made our first official stop and we got out of the car and Michael's never been to see his uncle's new place, so we're here. And we were joking about, well, maybe we'll just start knocking on windows and yelling for him, and then sure enough, he was yelling for us from the top floor. <laughs> so here we are. Wow. And there's the ocean. Wheat harvest. The farmers delivers their harvest here, and then they blows it up onto boats, and it goes to the mainland and feeds Europe. So Michael was telling me something really fascinating, and I know I've been using that word fascinating, but it's there's really no other way to describe it. He said that as of this month, the Swedish crown is changed from what he always knew it as, which always had a king's picture. Now they actually have authors that are famous from Sweden. And the author of Pippi Longstocking is a major historical figure here, is now on the currency, and there's a whole lot of history here about Pippi Longstocking. Now, we were driving by, he said, I wanna show you something. He said, you see this sign underneath the P? Every time you're out driving and you see that sign, that means there's something historical here. So we stopped off to do this little historical site, and I'm gonna show it to you now. So this is where we're at right now. We're actually gonna see this and it's from the early Bronze Age, 1800, 1100 BC, wow. So we're gonna walk over this thing to get to it, and you can kind of see it right there. This was one of two boat-sized graves that they used to have here. And they cremated the bodies and actually put them around and inside, and this is to symbolize the graves. And what they said was that archaeologists were out here nosing around and they noticed that there was rubble right over here where another one was. And uh, Michael said there's actually a handful of these all over Visby, but that they, they had tried to crop and tried to plant agriculture where the other one was. So that's why the other one's missing. But I want to get up here and show you because isn't that really weird, like really interesting? Especially the history, like the age. This is from the Bronze Age they were doing stuff like this. And one of our next stops, I'm actually gonna show you what's known as a Roman mile marker. I kept seeing these off the side of the road, I'm going, Michael, what are these? Are these like memorials to kings, or what are these? And he said, no. Rome used to keep up our roads here, and so they have put the original Roman mile markers on top of like a little, looks like almost like a little house. I'll show them to you when we go by it. But those are the original Roman mile markers. So he said, sometimes you'll be out just walking around. You can't really hike because there's no, all the ground is level here. But he said, you'll be out like walking around. You'll be out in the middle of a forest and you'll see one of those Roman mile markers because there used to be a street out there. Wow. <laughs> and apparently they found like bone fragments throughout the years out here. But it's kind of interesting if you look from here, I know we have a little bit of a distant shot, but right there is a field of horses grazing and then just beyond that is the, the ocean. And if you look even further beyond the ocean, you can see another island over there. Well, we are about to enter the land that Michael calls home, Tablingbo, is that how you pronounce it? Yep, that's it. We just drove past a 
house and Michael points over and says, that's where I went to Sunday school. And then he proceeded to tell me a story about how he walked out because they tried to make him Jesus in a play and he knew how that story ended and didn't want to do it. <laughs> Classic. Maybe we'll go to Bisbee uh, and then uh, Skyler will stay and that's where we'll stay um, and then a couple other guests. All right. It's an old train station. The train, train tracks used to go all the way up here that doesn't have the tall steeple because it burned down, um, so it isn't as tall. Oh, my sorry. old church? And my old uh, school? Michael's school. He said he had eight people in his class. I like those numbers. That's, that's more fun than what I had. And this is, the corn is new. This is corn the first is time we've been back and we've seen that there's corn. Usually it's like potatoes, rapeseed, and wheat are the main three. Mm -hmm. This is the sheep fence that we were talking about, the lamb fence. There's some lamb in there too on our left. The first house we're passing is Carolyn Lagerfeld's house and then this is Billy's house. So you'll stay here at Billy's house. Well, we've made it to Michael's homestead. Well, his dad's homestead. This is where I will be staying while I'm here. Beautiful. So Michael was telling me that uh, his house here was actually like built in sections. So yeah. he's gonna kind of give us a tour. Is, and this used to be like the house, which is now just an office or like a messy office. And this used to be the house, one room. Wow. And you can see the walls are, you have an outer wall thickness to it. And then it was expanded to it. Come around here. So this part was then kind of added on to, and you can tell here, the time it was, it was. Oh wow! Yeah. It says you might not be able to catch it. It says 1791. Oh. Yeah. 1791. Wow. This is the newest part. This was like done in 1910. Oh, so this is like the new, the the newbie part. 1910. So he said he thinks that the oldest part was that one room that was the house. That was probably in the 1600s at some point, and then. Oh, oh, wow. Going up here is because this is an organic potato, so you can't have any like pesticides or anything on it that is. So it's kind of gross as it is. Old chicken farm that we've been like renovating, and that's we make it into a cigar and whiskey lamp for the weather. Oh, awesome. We just cleaned it out and we had to put fresh coat of paint. We found some used furniture for like 60 bucks or something. Yeah, the Jaeger built this like in a couple, of, like an hour, a couple hours. Yeah, it was out of like makeshift kind of stuff that was pallets and stuff. Yeah. And, stuff yeah. and then this was just something that was in here. We have it, there's a bunch of junk on it right now, but we'll clean it all up and we can put like, you know, glassware and stuff in there. He's got to finish this shelf. We'll have some whiskey bottles up here. And then um, we're going to get some, we have we bought hooks. We're going to put the hooks up so we can kind of hang these lights up through here. Um, that lamp right there we also got online. That's like a gas lamp. There's actually, Billy has a matching one. It's super heavy. You feel it. It's like steel. Um, that's going to hang up in the corner. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That is heavy. You can tell by all the clanging around. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> Found a little bird's nest living in here. Yeah. My first thought when I looked at this, I'm like, if this can be a smoking room, where's the ventilation? <laughs> and then Michael points down here to this barn door and we're just going to open actually, that. actually, Billy or... wants to make this his garage. So the idea is you can pull a car in through there. Makes sense to me. And then this is the view right outside the window. So we're going to go have lunch with Michael's neighbor who is also an actress in Los Angeles. But she owns a house out here. Her name's Carolyn Lagerfeld. Yeah, and to get to her house, you literally just cut through the trees. And she just had this fence built and she was explaining to me how it's built and she said that an old man, like an 85 year old man built this for her. And she said that he, she goes, he can't hardly, can't hardly walk, but his hands are stronger as an ox. And she said, basically use juniper trees uh, the same thing that gin is made out of and they 
tie these insane knots here. And she said, these things, these fences are actually so strong that like a 200 pound guy could walk across them with no problems. And um, she said they generally, these fences last for about 20 years. And just in case I forgot to mention it, guys, not one nail, all tied knots. As, as she said, knots that would make a Boy Scout jealous, <laughs> hand tied. And this is her house. She's uh, Michael's next door neighbor, but I met her in California. She also lives in California. She's an actress and uh, she's making us dinner tonight. So that's what we're here for now. Oh my god, I'm, so, I'm, not, I'm not Instagram ready. <laughs> so I'm about to have a 30 year old scotch yeah. from Carolyn's uh, father's cellar. Actually, probably more. No, Nicholas is 30. My father died when he was 30. I'm sure he had it 10 years before then, so 40. Probably 40. Wow. Yeah. Now we're looking for her lambs. She has a couple of lambs living in here. And I'm drinking what we assume is 40 year old scotch now. It's 40 year old plus, I think it was probably a 50 year old active. Yeah. Ago, so that makes it like 55, probably. Birth of rock and roll scotch. There they are. You can kind of see them slowly moving around over there. That's what that, uh, right there, that's what that big rock looking thing is, the lamb. It's an 18th century farm. So there's the uh, the date on the fireplace right there. Look at that. Oh wow! So Michael is saying that that she rents this out when she's not living here, when she's in LA. So she has all kinds of cool little. There's like a room full of bikes to take to the beach, and Michael's gonna host uh, ping pong tournaments up here when he's supposed to be getting married, probably. And she keeps these kind of old comics for people to look at. Look at that, Scooby-Doo from 1983. That is classic, I was a big Scooby-Doo fan. I love the movie, The Phantom, I never got to read the comics, but this is like the real Phantom, because look how it's spelled. Phantom. Yeah. Well, there's the Swedish flag, and Michael was just telling me that... It's not the proper flag, though. That's like a, what we call a vimpel. It's like a, like a shitty thing. We'll, we'll put a proper up soon. There will be an American flag there and a Swedish one at my house. Or our house. He's telling me that they're going to have everybody park for the wedding basically over here because... And I said, where the horses are? He said, yeah, because we got to move the horses because we're letting off fireworks. And he said his dad used to sell fireworks, and surprisingly, for all the things that are, are outlawed in Sweden... He said that fireworks are not. I can't figure that. He said that you can also drive with, you can't drink and drive, but you can drive with an open container in your car so your, your passenger can be the one drinking. Ah, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. mm, this is delicious. Again, thank you so much. Oh, you're mm -hmm. welcome. Mm -hmm. This is Gotland vanilla ice cream? Yeah, Gotland vanilla ice cream. With cloudberries. Which and I have in Sweden. Never had before. I'm excited. Well, gang, the food was amazing. And Lionhearts, I hope you guys enjoyed. Even though this was like a travel day, and even though I had to take two or three planes today, and haven't slept much, and I'm just totally wiped out, I still wanted to give you a little bit of uh, Gotland, a little bit of Sweden while I was here just getting to know the first day here. So I hope you guys got uh, a little something out of this and we have a few weeks of this and it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be an early day tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night now because I am so, so tired. I'm sure you can probably tell in my face and in my eyes. But I wanted to send a uh, shout out, thank you to two people who donated today, um, Edwin Vandenberg and Ronald Rousseau, or Roussat, however you pronounce it, I'm sorry. It came in Euro, so I assume that you're uh, R-U-S-S-A-T. Rusat? I hope. Thank you guys so much. Um, that was very nice of you. Have a great night, Lionhearts. I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow. From Hublingbo, Gotland, Visby, Sweden. Goodbye. <laughs>